tonight from ski slopes and fighter jets, laboratories and construction sites. 30 athletes return to Oklahoma City. Everybody's watching me. They bring youthful enthusiasm. I'm gonna fly through that course tonight. So I'm gonna give them something to see. You see that flip? Ageless wisdom. Well, I want the most epic run ever seen. So check this out, you won't believe. The oldest man ever up the warp wall. And a desire to perform. I'm gonna light the crowd on fire. You're gonna see a show. Gonna give them something to see. I'm not just gonna put on the show, I'm gonna be the show. I can't hold it back. That's it. Oh, yeah! Like a stick of dynamite. He is flying through this course. Don't stop. Get it, get it. Yes, he can. I will be the next American Ninja Warrior. Beast Body has done it. Oh. It's another glorious night in the Great Plains, and we're back outside the Oklahoma Capitol Building, which tonight is home to the city finals of American Ninja Warrior. Hello, everyone. I'm Matt Eisman. Here, as always, with former NFL defensive end Akbar Bajabi. Matt, look at this. This crowd is pumped up, and I'm jacked to be back here in OKC. Well, we start tonight with 30 athletes, but only 15 will move on to the Vegas Finals, and this course is a beast. Akbar, these athletes are really going to have their work cut out for them. Yeah, they will. And we've got a lot of familiar Ninja favorites here. We've got veterans like Brent Stephenson aiming for his sixth trip to Vegas. He is delivering! But we're also going to see some young guns like last year's rookie sensation, the opera singer and Ninja trainer, Daniel Gill. He is flying through this course. Plus, Thomas Stillings, who was the fastest in qualifying. He is stilling the show right here. As always, the city finals course is brutal, with 10 obstacles total, four more than qualifying. For a look at what's new, let's go down to Christine Leahy. Matt, thank you. First, just like in qualifying, the athletes will have to make it through the floating steps, the ring swing, the log runner, the tire swing, bar hop, and the 14 and a half foot warp wall. Then on to the four obstacles added for finals. As always, this back part of the course starts with the salmon ladder, where athletes have to jump the metal bar up four rungs. Then it's bungee road, where competitors have to grab onto the bunches of bungee cords and work their way across to the hanging pipe. On the all new window hang, they'll use whatever strength they have left to climb across a series of small ledges using their hands or feet. And finally, competitors will face the invisible ladder. They must pump their arms upward like they're climbing a ladder and ascend the 30 foot chute. And if they make it to the top, they've guaranteed themselves a spot in the national finals in Las Vegas. Matt and Akbar, back to you. To see how these obstacles were developed, check out the NBC digital exclusive Crashing the Course at Facebook.com slash NBC Ninja Warrior. And we're going to start things off with a familiar name. This is Houston software developer Jeff Lancaster. He's a veteran competitor who's made it to Vegas the past two seasons, yet all anyone wants to talk about is his sister. And right up the warp wall. So I've been doing American Ninja Warrior for a couple of years now. And last year I drug my sister Jill into it. And she completely overshadowed me. And now I'm a nobody and she's like celebrity. No, for real. People Google me to find her. The worst part is when I meet strangers, they're like, are you Jill's brother? And I'm like, oh! I'm proud of my sister, but every year I'm out there on the course and I'm killing it and I get no respect. Tonight, I'm gonna make you remember my name, Jeff Lancaster. Come on, Jeff! And there's Jill along with their parents wearing those special Lancaster family shirts. Now, I want one though. Seriously, when he makes it through the finals, he better give me a shirt. Well, Jill ran in qualifying, but went out on the ring swing. No women here in Oklahoma City were able to make it to the finals. But don't trip, Jeff Lancaster is legit. This is his third straight appearance in the city finals. And he didn't trip, making it through the floating steps. Now on to the ring swing. 
You need to latch that ring onto the hook. Misses on the first swing. And now misses on the second. This is surprising because he sailed through this obstacle in qualifying. Cannot touch the platform once you've started, so it's hard to build up momentum, Akbar. I can tell you, this is wasted energy for Lancaster right here. If you can't help this one, you are in trouble. This is an ominous sign for the run of Jeff Lancaster. Finally hooks in, but a lot of energy wasted. Well, this dismount is now tougher than in qualifying. There's a stop on the chain, and it won't swing as far. Oh, right there on the touch. Got a thumbs up from Lancaster. Now facing the log runner, which was so deadly in qualifying. Took out top competitors like Lance Picas and Casey Catanzaro. 36 athletes in all. Oh, be careful. Oh, oh, oh watch this. Oh, swim dive. And Jeff Lancaster going in. The log runner already taking out a top competitor tonight. Watch his left foot on the second log. It slips right over the top, and he could never regain his balance after that. And he went head first into the water. Just got hung up. Lost my focus. It happens. Up next, a guy who brings so much passion to the course. This is Nate Burkhalter, an oil and gas engineer from Houston. And nothing will stop him from realizing his dreams. We only get one shot. So let's make the most of this opportunity. I applied for season six and season seven, and I didn't make the cut, and it wrecked me. So the past two years, I've done three walk-on lines, and it's a pretty grueling process. I spent probably a total of 25 days sleeping in tents, four hours of sleep a night, just waiting for the opportunity to get on the course. So this was my third season applying for a Ninja Warrior, and I finally got the call. We are excited to tell you that you have been selected for this next season. <laughs> I made it! I made it! I made it! So when I finally got to compete in Oklahoma City, it was so surreal. Nate Burkhalter is electrifying this crowd. I've been dreaming about that moment for many years, and I just had flashbacks of all the sacrifice, the times in the walk-on line, and it all just washed away hitting that buzzer. Our first finisher of the night. It was worth the wait, but I'm not done yet. My goal is to get to Vegas. Nothing can stop me. No limits. He's got some of the rowdiest fans out here with some serious proposals, along with his brother and friends on the sidelines. This is the first time in three years he's made it to the city finals, and he wants to capitalize on it, Akbar. It's the first time competing in the city finals. Make the most of it. Moving on to the ring swing. Remember, Nate Burkhalter had a huge cheering section for his qualifying run. They went crazy when he became our first finisher of the night. Makes it to the second ring. But having a little trouble dismounting. There he goes. Ooh. And he's through. Now the dreaded log runner. Wow, no problem for Nate Burkhalter. And going right into the tire swing. He'll have to use his upper body to get across these three hanging tires. Oh, my, this is another obstacle that was tough in qualifying. This took out 30 competitors. And look at this, fights right through it. Burkhalter looking strong, and he's moving quickly. Now the fifth obstacle, the bar hop. Has to jump that metal bar across from cradle to cradle. Oh, check this out. He's using that switch grip with his hands turned in different directions. We saw a lot of athletes use that in qualifying to get better control of the bar. Now reaches the second bar. One more hop to go. Well, you can see it swinging in the cradle. That makes timing and momentum so much more challenging. Woo! Real close on the dismount, but no limits. Nate marches on. Now the first to face the 14 and a half foot warp wall. We're going to move on to the back half of the course. Here he goes. Wow. And stops to point out the back of his shirt. The shirt has a map of Africa. That's where he's done mission work, building wells and villages. That is sending out his message. And what a positive message it is, Akbar. And I like that humility. He's taking this opportunity to spread the word on a charity. Now facing the brutal final four obstacles, starting with the salmon ladder. Has to jump the bar up four rungs. 
And he's one of the bigger guys at six feet, 175 pounds. This is the farthest he's ever been on the course. Oh! No limits. Nate reaches his limit on the salmon ladder. But we'll have to wait and see if that's good enough to get him to Vegas. Wow, Burkholzer had that look on his face like, whoa, I'm in trouble. Watch his right side as he goes for that third one. He just completely misses the rung, and down he goes. He's standing by with Christine. Nate, not every ninja has, what are these, cardboard cutouts of themselves in the audience. Not I think every, they like you. Not every ninja has friends like mine. Oh, that was really cute. They loved you out there. Hey, the salmon ladder ultimately took you out. What do you think went wrong, and is it something that you've practiced on before? Yeah, I have practiced on it before, and I'm pretty surprised. I felt strong. I don't think I overlooked it, but I was pretty surprised that I fell. So does that motivate you to come back and keep doing this? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it just further inspires me. I get more and more excited. And I, with fans like these, how can I not want to come back? I mean, fans like these you can make faces like this. I'm going to send it back like this. Matt and Akbar, back to you. <laughs> Looks good on you, Christine. Here's what's coming up tonight. He's got rock star looks and phenomenal skills. Wow! But last year's Rookie of the Year, Daniel Gill, has some unfinished business. The stakes are pretty high for me tonight. Plus, Jon Stewart's gonna try to break his own record. Jon Stewart is going to Las Vegas. Yeah! How far can this 50-something get on the course tonight? I'm gonna go show people what's possible. And later, six months ago, he had a stroke and almost died. Now, Grant Clinton's comeback could lead all the way to Vegas. I would like to be known as a fighter. When American Ninja Warrior returns. Welcome back to American Ninja Warrior in Oklahoma City. While we were away, two more athletes took on this city finals course. Wichita's Brian Doom, AKA Major Doom, brought a big group and bigger enthusiasm. But when the Air Force tanker pilot reached the log runner, Doom went boom. Ooh! Splash is down. Gonna need the Navy to rescue him after that one. IT specialist Alex Moran is one of 13 rookies to make it to tonight's city finals. But the Texas natives run was also cut short by the log runner. Ooh! Right there in the goody good! Well, we get a lot of unique athletes at American Ninja Warrior, and our next competitor is certainly that. This is rookie Reed Pletcher from Sun Valley, Idaho. He's a ski guide for visually impaired skiers. He sees for those who can't. Start down, it's gonna be an icy descent. About two seconds in, I'll follow. Just grab the course as we go. I originally got into Paralympic ski coaching because I was a professional Nordic racer myself. I was having a great run at it until I had a head injury. Rock climbing fall, fell 25 feet. Spent about two months in the hospital, lost English language. And after that traumatic event, I wasn't mentally strong enough to race for myself. Okay, we got a long turn to the right. So we start turning right. I train visually impaired athletes, and that involves me skiing with them with a microphone and a speaker and describe the course. Okay, we got an uphill coming up here, straight uphill. It was pretty tricky for us to work together. It was the first time it wasn't about me, it was about someone else. Ever since then, I've been able to motivate myself and want to achieve my athletic potential. And American Ninja Warrior is the perfect combination to go up and see what I'm made of. <laughs> and there's his girlfriend and fellow skier, Kay Fink, cheering him on. And you see that blue kinetic tape on him? That's to give him shoulder support and try to prevent further injury. Yeah, that's right. He actually hurt that shoulder in qualifying. He wasn't sure if he was going to be able to compete tonight, but look at him go. Well, these city finals course is so challenging. If you're not 100%, it's going to be a real challenge to survive. But he's past the floating steps. And that shoulder will be tested here at the ring swing. And struggling on the first swing to get it on the hook. Mm, there it is. That's what I'm talking about. Well, this guy was a world-class athlete in Nordic skiing, was on track for the Olympics, but the climbing accident five years ago ended his competitive skiing career. Now he's concentrating on American Ninja Warrior. 
Oh, he's struggling here on the swing. That bar locks in at 90 degrees down. Yeah, and it changed from qualifying, so you have to be able to time it just right, like that. And now the skier is going to try to glide across the log runner. Already seen three people fall here. Wow, that was smooth. Let's check this thing out again. Others have struggled on it, but look at Fletcher's feet. He always stays up on top of the logs. That's why he was able to get through it so easily. But now Fletcher's got a tick on the tire swing. He's 5'8", 164 pounds, primarily a skier, but he does have rock climbing experience, which should help him here. Well, the technique there, too, has a lot to do with speed as well, because the longer you spin on there, the more energy that you exert here on this obstacle. And you don't want to waste your time on this one. Just get it, grip it, fill it, and get off. Ooh! Oh, oh, oh! oh. And look at that stuck the landing! Oh, man! Well, Fletcher's making it exciting. But now has to face the obstacle that took him out in qualifying, the bar hop. And we have increased the distance in the gaps now. So, Akbar, the thing you talked about, having that grip slip in your hands becomes even more prominent. How do you like his approach here, buddy? I love the switch grip here. That switch grip is going to stop him and prevent him from peeling off. He's going to feel it, but that's all right. He's going to have an emergency break there with the switch grip. Now keep your form here. Get that lache. And trying to build up the momentum here to transfer it over. And because that cradle is so big, it makes it more difficult to get a nice lache. See that thing moving back and forth. Look at that bar moving back and forth, scratching the surface there. But he's through. The rookie's moving on. So good. So good. You got this. Now the warped wall. This guy used to be a world-class skier in his own right. Now can he summit one of the great, iconic mountains in sports? Our warped wall. Right at the, the first time he's ever faced the wall, and Fletcher does it. It's not just his girlfriend. Everybody's getting excited about this rookie's run. This is his first season, and now his first time seeing the back half of a brutal upper body intensive city finals course. And it starts here with the salmon ladder. Here we go, Reed. Oh, boy, with that injured shoulder, I don't know how he's going to manage the salmon ladder. Yeah. He's got to jump it up four rungs. This is his first time trying this obstacle. Uh-oh, Matt. This is, this is a little... He might be having some technical difficulty here. Man, he is really struggling. Oh, but makes it to the top. Well, it wasn't pretty, but Reed Pletcher is moving on. He'll be the first to try Bungie Road. He's going to have to grab that. Well, we saw this in Kansas City, and you could see he is already down at the end of those bungees. Ooh, a dangerous road on Bungie Road. But a good run by the rookie. These city finals courses are so challenging, we may not see many finishers tonight. The secret is you want to grab up high on the bungees, but watch his right hand. It slides down to the bottom, and it's very tough to get a grip. And when he brings his left hand over, his body weight pulls him right off. Well, we're going to see some of the biggest ninja names tonight in OKC, including Brent Stephenson and the godfather, David Campbell. Their run's coming up. Plus, he was a hot shot rookie. He is stylish right now. Now, sophomore sensation Thomas Stillings tries to show he can run with the best. My pick to win it all this year has definitely got to be me. He's coming up on American Ninja Warrior. Welcome back to American Ninja Warrior. This season, our friends at Palm Wonderful are offering a special bonus for the fans. Go to NBC.com slash Palm to enter the Train Like a Crazy Healthy Ninja Sweepstakes, where you could win $10,000 and a trip to L.A. to work out with American Ninja Warrior champ, Isaac Caldero. While we were away, three Ninja veterans got their shot at the course. Ryan Beckstrand brought a big group from Utah, including five of his kids. So smooth on the modified dismount. But after an impressive start, the manager at Lowe's got hammered at the log runner. Oh, right there on the bridge of his nose! Idaho's 
44-year-old Chris Moore brought his six-pack abs to the city finals for the second straight year. He says he's actually stronger than he was last year. But the man nicknamed Seymour couldn't see his way past the ring swing. Oh, and rejected Seymour. We're going to see less of him because he's out. Houston photographer Andrew Lowe's looked picture perfect early on. Uh, he is crawling, Matt. Look at that. But even this four-time veteran couldn't get past the difficult bungee road. Oh! And there it is. The grip gives out. Well, city finals courses are always a challenge, and this one tonight is truly tough. But our next athlete has a lot of potential. This is Giselle Bozeman from Conroe, Texas. He's a tumbling coach who was very impressive in qualifying. Got his grandfather, his sister, and his mom all here on the sidelines. Bozeman, such a character. And long legs. Oh, Daddy long leg almost got caught up there. Well, we saw him in qualifying take a very aggressive approach. Maybe too young to know better, the 25-year-old rookie. Ooh. But an explosive athlete. He's got a long body at 6'2", 177 pounds. Tell him why you're mad, bruh. Because he is running this course right now like he is mad. Look at him. Now already to the tire swing. Bozeman, a proud graduate of Sam Houston State. And he's looking like he's got a plan for this course. Well, he can use those long arms of his on this obstacle. And he is through. Mom's getting excited. Watch out. Watch out. Oh, and look. You can see him. He's staring down the bar hop. It took him down in qualifying. Well, as a tumbling coach, may not work as much on the upper body strength, which is what you need on this obstacle. Great speed to this point. It took you out in qualifying, but this is the finals. You got to come up big. There you go. He's got the athleticism to power through this obstacle. Played wide receiver for the Katy High School football team, leading them to a state championship in 2008. You can see him going with that switch grip. He didn't use that in qualifying, and he fell here, but still managed to stay in the top 30. Big swing, big swing. Oh, oh, it on. Talking about overcoming your fear. Well, there it is. He said he was a little afraid there at the bar hop. Well, didn't make it this far in qualifying, so this will be his first attempt at the warp wall. Oh, that didn't look good, Matt. Two attempts left. And not pretty. It is not pretty at all. Unorthodox, sloppy, but that's all right. Well, a beautiful shot here in front of the Oklahoma Capitol building, but his work not done. Now facing the final four obstacles. That look at yourself, mad dog in the salmon ladder. Well, he's centering himself, Akbar. He's mentally focused. But what does he have left in the tank physically? Does he have the upper body strength to get up this salmon ladder? Ooh, Matt, is this gonna be hard? That big jolt coming down here. Oh. Big jolt. And tumbling down in the water. But still a respectable run from the 25-year-old rookie from Texas. Well, Bozeman's 6'2 and almost 180 pounds, so he's a bigger guy, and I think he just got exhausted. You can see how he got his left side up, but not the right, and it just jolted him right off. I think I peed it out of the end, but I feel good about myself. Well, no finisher so far, but some of our best are coming up. Guys like Karsten Williams and his friend Tremaine Dorch. We'll see them a bit later. Also ahead, he trains like a 20-year-old. That baby's hard, that baby's fun. 54-year-old John Stewart reveals what keeps him young when American Ninja Warrior returns. Welcome back to American Ninja Warrior. Now our next athlete is doing medical research that might someday save your life. This is Mitch Vitapo. He's a grad student at the University of Kansas, and he calls himself the Science Ninja. Howdy, folks, and welcome to another episode of Mad Science. Science is automatically fun. You have to make science fun. Every day I throw on a lab coat, put on the safety goggles. It's really cool and interesting. My research is focused on creating tissue engineered heart valves for pediatric patients. It has the potential to be a life-saving device for children. 
scientists can absolutely be good ninjas. I've studied the course, I've created a hypothesis, now I'm gonna go hit that buzzer. I'm gonna solve this equation. Mitch has a huge crowd of supporters in the stands, along with his family, all cheering him on. But we get ninjas from all backgrounds, and Vitapo's research could be life-saving. He's developing heart valves for children, which could save kids from having a lifetime of heart surgeries. And he brings that scientific approach to the course. He researches techniques for every obstacle. Here's his girlfriend. She's an aerospace engineer. So between these two, a lot of brain power. Nice. Hooks it on the first try. Not wasting time here, Matt. Well, this is Vita Poe's second season competing. But a little hung up here. He need to straighten himself out for the dismount. Whoa! Having to take a lot of extra swings here. He finally makes it through. 5'6", 150, but played varsity football back in Kansas. Wide receiver and cornerback. Well, let's see his footwork on the log runner. Uh-huh. Well, that is as smooth as we've seen, Akbar. Yeah, guys get it now in the finals. You see how you start dialing in when it's the finals, when the pressure is real? You want to get to Las Vegas? That's how you're supposed to compete here. Wow, Vitapo looks so comfortable flying right through the tire swing. And I don't even think he took an extra breath on him, Akbar. Oh, he really didn't. And when you want it, you got to bring your A game. You have to bring the whole day alphabet when you compete here in the finals. Nice! Well, he got through this obstacle pretty comfortably in qualifying until the dismount just miscalculated and his foot grazed the water. Let's see what he does to compensate here. I can't believe, without the switch grip, watch out for that peel. Don't peel off. And the Science Ninja moves on, and a lot of support here. It's a five-hour drive from Mission, Kansas, but it sounds like the entire town has made the trip here to cheer for Mitch. Wow. Explodes off the war crawl. Okay, I see you, Science Ninja. And now to the back half of the course. Second year in his PhD program could be anywhere from five to nine years before he learns those letters after his name. Well, I told him to bring the whole alphabet. One of the alphabets he's gonna have to bring here is the L's. Keep the L's nice and tight and strong here on the salmon ladder. Uh, not fast, but looking confident, and you can see him checking the bar placement, making sure he's not sliding side to side. Now, Bungie Road. This bungee road can be like a dark alley. It can be dangerous if you don't have the grip strength needed to survive. But no problem for Vitapo. Now the pipe is horizontal this year and much more difficult to grab onto. Oh, yeah! You see how he choke hold that thing? I see that. Get, put that good choke and hold. And the swing and dismount. And the science ninja, the first to conquer bungee road. And now he'll give us our first look at the window hang. Oh, window hang. It's a new obstacle. You hadn't seen this one before. You can't reach above the window pane. You have to make sure you engage every single part of your body. And smart, trying to lock the lower body in. Yeah, that takes pressure off the upper body as well. It gives you some energy to save there when you're making these transitions, because the transition is key here. Very little to work with on these ledges. Just two and a half inches wide, down to one and a half inches. Oh, ooh, on the tippy tip. Oh! So far tonight, Mitch Vitapo all the way to the window hang before splashing down. Well, this is where the window hang gets really tough when you're making that move to the next ledge. Vitapo got his left hand on that two-inch ledge, but when he shifts all that body weight over, he can't hang on. Well, Daniel Gill's promising another electric run tonight. And for an exclusive look at Daniel's journey to Oklahoma City, check out our digital series 24 before Available on the NBC app or at NBC.com. But up next, he was the fastest in qualifying. He is stilling the show right here. Rising star Thomas Stillings and his genie pants hit the course when we return on American Ninja Warrior. 
Welcome back to American Ninja Warrior and the Oklahoma City Finals. While we were away, three more athletes took to this brutal finals course. 28-year-old power plant operator Jared Bandy had a close call with the tire swing. But survived. Nice recovery, but the bar hop proved to be a different story. Wyatt out of Houston, Texas, was looking solid through the first half of the course. And a real aggressive pace. But the 37-year-old pastor couldn't find his path through Bungie Road. Oh! He had the bar but couldn't hold on. Ah! Houston firefighter On Lee raced to the back half of the course. Wow, right now, On Lee is blazing. And the rookie made it all the way to the window hang. Up next, a rising star in the ninja world. This is Thomas Stillings, the parkour instructor out of San Antonio. And Stillings was explosive in qualifying, put at the fastest time of the night. And that's not his only reason to celebrate. I got you. I finally got the courage to propose to my girlfriend, and she said yes. I'm so thankful for the fact that Zoe is there for me, and my life is just now on the fast track to happiness. <laughs> With Zoe coming to see me compete tonight, it means everything. I have more self-confidence. I'm going to just kill it. Thomas Stillings. He's a young guy. He's a little flamboyant out there. But I'm telling you, he is a force to be reckoned with. He loves to go fast and has that, that parkour background. I am going to explode like a stick of dynamite. I'm going to be a star this year. And there's Zoe, his fiance. She's holding the phone so Stilling's mom can watch on FaceTime. Well, Akbar, last year Daniel Gill was the electric rookie. Thomas Stilling somewhat in his shadow. But this year, Stilling's actually beat Gill's time in qualifying. They're developing quite a friendly rivalry. And there's Gill supporting him tonight. Yeah, man, he's been on a mission ever since last season, popping the big question to his girlfriend of three years. You can tell he's just got a little something different to him. But the thing that's the same, those genie pants. And there we go. So nimble, this parkour expert. You see the speed that he's going with? This is a good tempo here. Well, we mentioned the genie pants. Stilling saw an athlete in Asia wearing them. Thought they'd look cool. His fiance got him a pair. Now it's become his trademark look. Oh! This guy is a showman. His mom watching on FaceTime. He wants the whole world to enjoy this as much as he is. Well, mama, there goes that man. On the bar hop now. It's not just the baggy pants that have style. It is this man. Well, MC Hammer would definitely be impressed with those pants. Well, he is looking too legit out here. Uh, too legit to quit. Exactly. This is only Stilling's second season competing, but he made it to stage two last year, aiming even higher this year. Good dismount there. Wow, he is flying! And look at that right up the road cloud, playing to the crowd. That's real confidence right there. Well, he was the fastest in qualifying, and now Thomas Stilling's looking to be the first finisher on this finals course tonight. And you can see even mom is screaming for her son. He reached the back half of the course as a rookie last year in Houston, falling on the eighth obstacle, but advanced to Vegas. Getting through the salmon there will put him in excellent position for Vegas. And now Bungie Road, and this is where we'll see what he has left in that upper body, Akbar. Bungie Road, you will not find this one on your navigation system. Well, really using the bungees to propel him forward right onto the pipe. There's no stopping Stillings, Matt. And he's done it. Only the third competitor to make it past Bungie Road thus far. The parkour instructor playing to the crowd every step of the way. Onto the window, Hank. And you can see Stillings looking ahead. Mounting the obstacle backwards so that he can lead with his hands and increase his reach. He's not a rookie anymore, Matt. This is a veteran approach by a young man ready to prove that he's an elite ninja. And a long reach there. 
But you can see how having those feet in, it's it's taking some of the weight off the upper body. Well, especially, too, if you're not confident in your upper body strength, that may not be your game. So what you want to do is take some pressure off there. He's shaking it out now. Well, again, this is a foreign method here to a parkour practitioner such as Stillings, but he is really adapting, Akbar. I give him credit. Now, what a dismount. Put that baby in reverse. Ooh, ooh. And he is the first to get through the window, Hang. It's gone farther than anyone so far. Lots of veterans running tonight, but this young gun could be our first finisher. But he's got to get to the top of the invisible ladder. This final obstacle, a brutal 30-foot climb using just your upper body. We've seen before how hard this obstacle can be. He's already got his arms extended, and look at him. His arms are so dead. He's using his legs to kick him up. He's trying anything. What a climb. Wow. Oh, boy. Thomas Stillings, though, what does he have in the upper body, Arthur? Right, right. He just got 12 points. 12 play here. 10 feet left. Come on. Come on. Don't give in. Don't give in. And now Kipping. He is fighting. Stillings collapses. Comes up short on the invisible ladder, but the sophomore sensation, Thomas Stillings, goes farther than anyone so far tonight. Check this out. Stillings was having some fun out there, but at the invisible ladder, you could see it on his face. He was just gassed from the earlier obstacles and couldn't make it to the top. Let's go down to Christine for the Palm post-run interview. Thomas, the invisible ladder is so difficult, but you gave it everything you had. Tell me what goes through your mind as you're hanging there trying to get up. Uh... Basically, what's going through my mind is, please don't let go. Oh. I really want this. <laughs> well, you made it a really fun run. You even had some time for some backflips in there. What was that all about? Uh, I was getting really, uh, you know, pumped out. My cardio was giving out, so I was like, I need something to get my mind off of this. Well, I have a really good feeling we're going to see you in Las Vegas. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you so much. Guys, back to you. Coming up, grandfathers aren't supposed to do this. Yeah. Now. 54-year-old John Stewart is going to try to make history again tonight. Plus, Grant Clinton was close to death just six months ago. Now he's got a shot at the national finals. I like to do things that people say I can't do. This medical miracle runs next on American Ninja Warrior. Welcome back to the American Ninja Warrior City Finals in Oklahoma City. For super fan access to everything American Ninja Warrior, visit the official SB Nation fan site at ANWNation.com. Well, our next athlete has a remarkable comeback story. This is Grant Clinton, a bank manager from Houston. Just six months ago, he had a stroke and almost died, spending seven days in the ICU. Whoa! <laughs> and as you can tell, he is happy to be here. Life was great. I had a new baby girl. I got a beautiful family. And one day, my world was turned upside down. I was working out, and all of a sudden, I had this terrible headache. And it felt like somebody had a balloon in the back of my head and was pumping it up. I went to the emergency room, and they found that my brain was bleeding. It turned out I had a stroke, and we were going to be going into emergency brain surgery. Grant suffered something called a subarachnoid hemorrhage, which um, is often fatal. Half the people that have one end up dying. There were so many unknowns. Caden was still at school, and we had him rushed um, to the hospital when we found out the severity of it. I pulled my wife over, and I told her, just in case I don't make it out of this, move on with your life. You know, find a good daddy for our children. Grant was telling me that I needed to be strong for the kids, um, that I would be fine. She just uh, filled up with tears, and uh, we just held each other. When I came out, they made the statement that I did not have an aneurysm, so a huge relief. Luckily, uh, Grant uh, was in good health before he suffered this. Going into this competition, I've got a lot to show to people that have overcome 
different obstacles in their life. I'm here today by the grace of God because I've overcome a stroke. And I want to show the world that, uh, that you can overcome. You can overcome the obstacles. My family could have lost me six months ago. And tonight, they're going to be able to watch me an American Ninja Warrior. What a journey. Well, pretty amazing that he's walking, let alone in the city finals of American Ninja Warrior. He's got his wife, Lindsay, and two kids here, and a big group of supporters. Well, his shirt says Overcomer, and that's what this guy is. He's in the finals, Matt. That's big. He sent his, his submission video just one week after doctors okayed him to exercise again. So, hasn't had much training time, but here he is. Clinton's a mortgage banker, sits behind a desk most days. Hooks right up. Ooh, the banker was money right there. Oh! <laughs> And no matter how far he goes with what he's been through, just to make it to the finals is an accomplishment. Look at that! Oh, oh, oh. everything is safe for him. Safe landing again. But this is where he fell in qualifying on the tire swing. And that he's only 5'5". He doesn't have a big wingspan for this. But he is making it through these tires. And he's done. Well, that's what an athlete does. You can stumble, but you learn from your mistakes. The great ones do. And Grant Clinton showing a lot of confidence as he now faces for the first time the bar hop. Well, the gaps have been increased. The difficulty level up. And Akbar, what'd you talk about with the grip? Well, that grip, you got to go switch grip here. Ooh, wow. he's so lucky that he didn't peel off there. Well, but you noticed he preloaded. I think the good ones can do that. That was keeping his ass and releasing. Well, can he get up the warp wall? Never face this. Hasn't been there. Okay, that's all right. You're 5'5", five, five, but it's okay. We've raised this thing a half foot more. Well, a remarkable performance out of Grant Clinton. There it is, and on his second attempt, he gets it. Woo! Grant Clinton, the Texans standing tall in Oklahoma City. And what's so amazing, this guy isn't just a rookie, he's a 38-year-old rookie, and he is performing like a veteran. And with that medical emergency, he's barely had time to train for this. And city finals courses are a real test. This one in OKC, truly tough. But right here, he's got to keep his L's here, keep the form. Well, those arms getting fully extended, but doing a good job keeping the body and controlling the bar. And sometimes that can be a telltale sign here, Matt. It's just coming off of that last bar hop. He went a rung higher than he needed as he transitions now to Bungie Road. And as always, harder than ever. Now, this transition becomes very difficult here on the... Oh, good job! in! I love you, Mr. Pole. Lose my mind. This guy almost died six months ago. Apple, what a performance by this rookie. You got it. You got it. The window hang. You got to engage both the upper and lower body here. And look at the oh, immediate he's just transition. Gonna go straight up with the upper body strength, Matt. He's not using his legs at all. What strength. Six months ago in the ICU, fighting for his life. And now he is fighting for a spot in Las Vegas. Oh, man, this dude is the real genius. Are you kidding me? 30 feet away from guaranteeing his spot in Las Vegas. But the invisible ladder is so difficult. We just saw Thomas Stillings come up short a few minutes ago. Can this rookie be the one to break through? A man who sustained a stroke. Yeah, this is it. This is where he starts to feel the burn here in the bicep. That's all right. Keep going. You've come this far. You better get to the top there, Grant. But look at him. It's like he's smiling. He is enjoying this moment. Ten feet left. Steady progress, Akbar. Look at Grant Clinton go. Five feet. We may be looking at our first finisher. Unreal. Look at Grant Clinton go! Grant Clinton! Oh, fight! Don't fall down that hole! Oh! The rookie!
Sometimes you're there for a moment and you know it's special as it's happening. Say what you want, we're gonna call it early. That's gotta be our pop wonderful, crazy healthy run of the night. Grant Clinton nearly fell on the second obstacle. He needed two tries to get up the wall, but then dominated the back half and fought his way to the first buzzer of the night. He's standing by with Christine. today making it to the top in the city finals how does this moment feel for you oh it is so good god is so good I'll tell you what i was in a bed in an icu six months ago and people told me i was never going to do any kind of strenuous exercise ever again and now i'm competing against these great athletes and i just made it to the top it's an amazing thing and Lindsay, what is it like to watch him do what he just did tonight it's an absolute miracle it's amazing, and I just, it's amazing just to be able to help him accomplish his dreams, and um, I just, there's, there aren't words to describe. Well, Grant, congratulations. You were phenomenal out there tonight. Such an honor watching you do this. We'll see you in Las Vegas. Thank you. So there he is. Grant Clinton's at the top of the leaderboard as the only finisher so far. Remember, only the top 15 at the end of the night will move on to the national finals. Coming up, he's a singer, a dancer, and one of the top ninjas alive. It's got to be in the hair. Now Daniel Gill's going to try to do something he's never done before. And it's another sequel for The Godfather. Oh, that on the buzzer! David Campbell tries to book his eighth straight trip to the national finals when American Ninja Warrior returns. <laughs> Welcome back to American Ninja Warrior and the city finals here in Oklahoma City. Up next from Kansas City, Missouri, is a true American hero. This is former Army Ranger Andrew Potter. He's now out of the military, but still serving his fellow soldiers. I did two tours in Afghanistan as an Army Ranger. The U.S. Army Rangers are typically the ones going in and conducting the most difficult missions. I was in a gunfight with my platoon. This RPG had punched through the wall. If that would have detonated, we would have definitely died. I just realized that I was given a second chance that I got to come home. So that's what led me to wanting to help veterans suffering from PTSD. Pretty simple leadership, team building exercise. One person's gonna lead, one person's gonna climb blindfolded. I started working with Warriors Ascent, which is a nonprofit organization that helps veterans find a greater purpose in life. Bring your right hand up along that, that crease. Big, big hold on, on, on the left. There you go. That is the top hold, two hands. If you can help them learn to feel compassion and empathy again, they can actually go live like really wonderful lives. I'm definitely dedicating my run to all the men and women that serve something greater than themselves. And Potter's dad, wife, and brother all here to see his run. Well, had an impressive effort in qualifying before going out at the bar hop. And the Army Ranger now dancing through the floating steps, Akbar. And not to mention, he's one of the bigger guys at six feet, 175 pounds. He moves well. This guy did multiple tours in Afghanistan and said that it changed his life. He actually learned he had leadership skills you never imagined. Now he actually opened up his own climbing slash ninja warrior gym. And that preparation is paying off. Well, that's good. He's an experienced climber, a skydiver, and a base jumper, so the ring swing is probably nothing to him. Smooth dismount. And now the log runner, which you can never take for granted. Oh! Say oh! what? Well, the log runner was a nightmare in qualifying, taking out a lot of top competitors. It's doing it again tonight, Akbar. Well, let's check this out again. 
On that second log, his right foot is a little short and it starts to spin. That sends him off balance to the third log and he could never recover after that. Up next, a legendary veteran of the sport from Santa Cruz, California. It's 38-year-old David Campbell, better known as the Godfather. I've competed in every season of American Ninja Warrior. I've made it to Vegas every time. David Campbell does it! I've always been at the top of the pack. It was really amazing seeing Isaac achieve total victory last year. And he's done it! But at the same time, it was kind of a bitter pill to swallow. I wanted to be the first American Ninja Warrior. Boy, he's selling out right now! I really felt like I had something to prove this year. There it is, the Godfather! So it felt totally amazing to hit that buzzer. Oh, sat on the buzzer! I'm super excited for the city finals. My goal tonight is absolutely to get the fastest time. Well, the Godfather has ninja greats like Drew Greshel, the survivor Sam San, and Daniel Gill showing their support on the sidelines. For years, there was nobody faster. And look at him bound through the floating steps. That, that takes confidence, Akbar. Well, this is his eighth year competing. He should have confidence. Campbell locked in and looking flawless as usual. Yeah, and David Campbell, too, one, one that is respected in the community. And you see that hard stop there makes it extremely well, difficult. He is in trouble because now he's having trouble directing his body for the dismount, and Akbar. It's so hard to be able to get a good lache here, Matt. Campbell could be in trouble. Oh, but now he's starting to get it. Building up momentum, taking control in the dismount. But keep in mind, he probably had six or seven extra swings there, Akbar, taking its toll on his muscles. But right over the log runner, no problem. You have to wonder if all that time on the ring swing isn't going to wear him down for later on. Well, Campbell's been one of the greats for a long time, but he's pushing 40 years old, and the new generation of ninjas are putting pressure on the veterans. But he is through the tire swing. There's Brent Stephenson cheering for his fellow vet. See the look there on David Campbell. Man, already fatigue starting to set in. Well, for years, David Campbell was the master of American Ninja Warrior. But in the past few years, we have seen the great ones struggle. And we've seen that happen, and it happens in athletes. Well, Campbell's 38, Stephenson 35. A lot of young talent waiting to take over this sport. When we saw Thomas Stillings earlier, Daniel Gill running later tonight, the young guns are coming. I don't know that anyone has dedicated that. more of their lives to this sport than David Campbell. I don't think anyone has thought about how to attack this course more than him. Oh, an inadvertent slip! And this crowd is stunned. The Godfather out on the fifth obstacle. And I can't remember when the front half of a city finals course took out so many top competitors. Campbell looked like he was home free, but I think the veteran just misjudged this dismount. Came up short, and his left foot just brushes the water. A shocking end for the Godfather. Ah, dang it. Ah, I would have crushed the rest. Well, it's been a tough night for Ninja veterans so far, but Brent Stephenson's getting loose. His run's just ahead. Plus, we call him the muscle, but he's also a doting dad. Now, Tremaine George has got some good news to announce. I'm looking forward to the tea parties. He's coming up on American Ninja Warrior. Welcome back to American Ninja Warrior in Oklahoma City. While we were away, three more athletes tried to earn a spot in the national finals. Missouri's Kyle Mendoza was living dangerously throughout his run. Oh, oh, so close. And the FedEx delivery driver finally hit the brakes at the bar hop. Oh! Dance instructor Sadul Diaka showed impressive moves as he avoided elimination at the tire swing. Great balance there. But one obstacle later, the rookie from New Mexico ran out of gas. No pain, no gain. Clayton Wolf, all the way from Orem, Utah, was looking to be the leader of the pack. The wolf is loose. And he gave a wolf owl at the top of the wolf wall. Oh, boy, it's a full ball for you. But he missed the first rung of the salmon ladder, and the wolf got wet. 
On the course right now, one of the biggest names in the ninja world, Brent Stephenson. Ah! And he's through the title swing. Brent is, of course, the San Antonio gym owner competing for the seventh straight season. And there's Casey Catanzaro cheering for Brent. Those two no longer a couple, but still friends and business partners. You got it. Now the bar hop, which took Brent out in qualifying. Remember, he didn't use the switch grip in qualifying and fell. Let's see if he changes it for tonight. Well, you called it, Akbar, switching the hands around this time. Well, he learned from his mistake in qualifying where he didn't utilize the switch grip, and this switch grip really helps to prevent that peel. When the bar starts moving on this open cradle, it makes it extremely hard to keep your grip. Well, this is the spot where he fell on the final hop. Not tonight! And he's through. Now, that's a man that learned from his mistake. And Brent Stephenson, two and a half minutes to this point, and now the warp wall. And I remember, in the early years, this used to be one of Brent's weaknesses, the warp wall. Let's see how he does now, 14 and a half feet. But Brent is so dialed in, I just feel a different energy. Hang loose! I gotta say, I like this Brent. Having a good time, but still a little focused. The best of both worlds. Oh, snap! Uh-oh, the shirt is coming off. Uh-oh, the shirt is coming off. You got this, And right up onto the sand ladder. Nice, now you see him keeping those L's, keeping it real tight. Oh, real tight right there. Looking comfortable here as a trampoline. It's good core strength, but he hasn't trained grip as hard, and that could haunt him on bungee road. Yeah, there you go. And there's just one bungee in the middle that both hands have to share. This will really test his grip, Matt. Sliding down, look at the striations Stay on the high. back. Stay high. Stay high there, Brent. The lower you are on the bungees, the more strain is placed on the elbow because of the give. Oh! And there it is, the grip gives out. Well, a pretty good run by the veteran, but can't match what some of these new guys have done. We'll have to wait and see if it's good enough to stay in the top 15. Dang it! I don't have again. Well, he said it right there. Stephenson's grip strength just gave out. He was struggling to hold on to that last set of bungees, and you could see it in his face. He had nothing left. Up next, another one of our longtime veterans. This is Houston gym owner, Tremaine Dortch. He's making his fifth appearance, and he is known for those six-pack abs. But there's something new for Tremaine this year. This year, I got to compete on Team Ninja Warrior, but it was the first time I actually got to compete with my wife, Cassandra George, and that was so much fun. Yes, all right, baby. I'm so proud of you. The day after the competition, we got some unexpected news. We found out my wife's pregnant with a girl. I have my son Uri, and I know how to raise a boy. Like, two, two, that's it, that's it. Sports is right up my alley, but it's something about having a little girl I heard is just really dear to your heart. I'm looking forward to the tea parties and the dresses. I can't wait to have my ninja babies and my ninja wife all in one. Jermaine's <laughs> mom and sister are here, but. Cassandra's close to her due date, so his wife will be watching on the phone with their son, Uriah. And that dude is shredded, known for his fitness. 5'9", 158, most of it muscle, right through the floating steps. Man, to get a body like that, your zip code has to say gym, and Tremaine's does. You know, he and his wife, Cassandra, opened their own gym in Houston. Locks right in. Well, five times he's competed on American Ninja Warrior. This is his fifth season. Each of the past four years, he's made it to Vegas. A model of consistency. Well, don't get hung up here. This is not the place you want to be playing around with. Well, at this point, if he finishes the Salmon Ladder, he guarantees his spot in Vegas. But his momentum is really not in the right direction. Akbar, he's in trouble. But that's all right. He knows how to adjust here. And he does it, but used up a lot of energy there. With the experience that Tremaine Dorch has, I believe that he's going to torch the rest of these obstacles. Looking a little tentative here at the log runner. I see you. Oh, 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 oh
to dive forward. A little clumsy, but that's all right. As long as he made it through, give him another opportunity. Sandra is smiling. Got to be so hard to be watching from home. And he's up on the tire swing. Okay, Matt, so far it's been the new guys leading the way tonight. We need one of these veterans to step up and finish. And there you get a good look inside that tire. These early obstacles can wear you down for the back half, but he gets through. Tremaine Dorch looking strong. I've got to say, his form hasn't been flawless, but we're seeing his power. The question is, he's been a little inefficient, Akbar. As long as you've got that drive, that drive to keep moving forward. For Tremaine Dorch, it's the chance to return to Las Vegas. He was able to break through and make it to stage two last year, his best season ever. Come on, torch this one, Tremaine. Tremaine George bringing that football mentality. He played at Texas Southern University, and he's going to run right up this warped wall. Tremaine George demolishes the warped wall. You can see why this guy is in fitness. He's in tremendous shape, and he is performing, Akbar. We know he has practiced this obstacle a lot. If he gets through the salmon ladder, he guarantees his spot in Vegas. And he's got this, man. This is the same salmon ladder he's seen four years in a row. Oh! And Dorch misses, and just like that, his trip to Las Vegas is in jeopardy. Wow! I really thought that Tremaine Dorch would have enough left in the tank to be able to make it up the salmon ladder. Tremaine owns a gym. He's probably done the salmon ladder thousands of times, but watch the right side. He just misses the run completely, and another veteran comes up short. Let's go down to Christine, who's with Tremaine. Tremaine, you've qualified for Vegas every season that you've competed on this show. What does this feel like for you? Oh, very sickening. It's very sickening, but... Um... Like I said, it's part of the game. Uh, the, the 15 that go, they earn to go. Um, hopefully my time holds up, and uh, we'll see from there. Tremaine, you might be one of those 15 that gets to go. We're going to see if you made it far enough, fast enough, OK? Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Matt Nockbar, back to you. Well, still only one finisher tonight, but if anyone can reach the buzzer, it's Daniel Gill. His run's coming up on American Ninja Warrior. City Finals. While we were away, three more athletes tried to grab the last few spots for Vegas. Texas A&M student Dyron Jones had a big cheering section. But the theater major saw the curtains come down at the log runner. Oh! Boy went tumbling down in the H2O. Tow truck driver Amadou Kazi had to rescue himself at the log runner. Uh-oh, he's got to crawl his way out of trouble here, Matt. Kazi refusing to give up. But after that miraculous save, he was too exhausted for the bar hop. He just didn't have it in the tank, Matt. 25-year-old rookie Thomas Dovite was only the fifth athlete to make it past Bungie Road. Dovite looking strong, but the auto parts manager from Roanoke, Texas, couldn't survive the window hang. Oh! Well, we've been talking about the new generation of ninjas, and our next competitor may be the poster boy for the next wave. This is Daniel Gill, the ninja trainer from Houston with his trademark flowing hair. It's only his second season competing, but he's already one of the very best athletes out here. And he is blowing away this course. Wow! Last year was really fun, really exciting. I've got a sneaky suspicion that Mr. Gill here is going to be a star. Having a year under my belt, I know what to expect. Boy, Gill is flying! This year, I'm down for business. This is an unbelievable performance. If I want to be like the best. Looking like an experienced veteran. I have to train like the best. So this year, I've switched up my training a little bit to incorporate grip strength and then a lot of dance for the balance aspect, and I'm feeling very strong, very confident. Daniel Gill is fast and agile, and he definitely has amazing hair. <laughs> he's kind of uh, the ultimate package. He has, he has speed, consistency, and he's one handsome son of a gun. Heading into the finals tonight, the stakes are pretty high because I've yet to complete a city finals course. 
I don't have that on my resume yet. I'm going to do that tonight, and I'm going to join the Ninja Elite. There's Daniel's family and his girlfriend supporting him tonight. Well, Daniel Gill has just been electric. The Rookie of the Year, as you christened him last year out there. I expect to see more of the same that we saw last year. Well, he destroyed the qualifying course. The second fastest time of the night. His future is as bright as his shoes. Just 23 years old, but works and trains at Sam Sands Iron Sports Gym in Houston. There's Sam. He went out in qualifying a few weeks ago. Now got to use those dancing feet. Right through the log line. You can see him just dancing and moving through the course. Look at him, just so smooth. Started performing with a professional dance troupe this year. Says it's really helped his balance. The question is, how much better can he get? Well, he was a top rookie last year. Now, he may be the top ninja, period. And he's through. I gotta say, out there, he's, he's taking his foot off the accelerator, but he's looking more confident and more comfortable than we've ever seen him. Well, and that's what's gonna get him to the top here in, in the finals. He's gotta have this controlled approach. Control and dominate each and every obstacle here. And going into that cross grip, prevent that bar from that rotating. That will rock. It makes it hard. Oh, uh, yeah, Billy yeah. Idol was right. He is rocking that cradle. And a good dismount, and he's through. Well, you can see what a focus out of Gil. Normally, a smile, a flip of the hair right up the rope wall. Well, last year, he was just elated to be here, and now he knows he deserves to be here. Daniel Gill, explosive up the rope wall. Yeah. There it is. Wow. With only a few more runners left, he just needs to get up the salmon ladder to guarantee a spot in Vegas. But you know he wants to hit that buzzer tonight. You know what, what we're seeing here is he's had the skills, he is adding the confidence, the performance of a veteran. Well, Matt, I expect right now for, for Daniel Gill to blow this back half of the course to kingdom come. And by reaching Bungie Road, he's earned his ticket to Vegas. I can concentrate on finishing. And this is such an upper body challenge. But did you see the form there? The smoothness. I told you he was smooth. Smooth form and tremendous grips. They do not underestimate what he just did. That was impressive. But now the window hang. Only Thomas Stillings and Grant Clinton have made it through this. That there's a new top dog in Ninja Warrior. It's Daniel Gill. No doubt about it. And this guy, a professional dancer, an opera singer, and a world-class ninja warrior. You can sing your way through here. Shatter the window hang. He's going all upper body out yeah, there. It's interesting that he decides to use the upper body strength. Wow. But that speaks to the confidence that he has in his upper body. And this thing zigzags, too. Matt, so this is extremely difficult to zigzag your way through here. In a way, this is Woo! an insane cliffhanger type I-beam obstacle. No lower body at all. Going for the dismount. Yes! What did I say? I said he was going to blow this back half to kingdom come, and that's exactly what he's doing here. Well, only one finisher tonight, Grant Clinton, but Gill's got a chance to obliterate his time. This is the first time Daniel Gill's attempted the invisible ladder. Look at the ascension. He is going to oh, annihilate the fastest time of the night. Yeah, he's been pointing up all night. Well, how fast is he exactly where his career is going? We see a stumble out of the Godfather, the once, the past, and now we see perhaps the future. Daniel Gill. after all the other obstacles. But look at Daniel Gill pumping his arms and legs, and he got up as smooth as anyone we've seen all season. Let's go down to Christine for the Palm Post Run interview. Daniel, congratulations. I've got to say, you made that look easy. Are you feeling just more confident than ever this season? Definitely, definitely. I went out there and I did exactly what I planned, and it went flawlessly. Praise be to God. Flawlessly is right. The invisible ladder is a really hard obstacle, and you just went right up there. Ooh. How do you do it? 
um, practice, but it definitely was as difficult as it looked. My, my biceps are definitely on fire right now. Right, we're going to see you in Las Vegas again, Daniel. Congratulations. Thank you so much, Christine. <laughs> Matt, back to you. So Daniel Gill moves to the top of the leaderboard, which is dominated by first and second year guys. Remember, only the top 15 will move on to Vegas. And right now, the final two spots are veterans Tremaine Dorch and David Campbell. And with two runners left, they're in jeopardy. John Stewart's going to try to break his own record as the oldest athlete to qualify for the national finals in Las Vegas. His runs next on American Ninja Warrior. Welcome back to the American Ninja Warrior City Finals here in Oklahoma City. Up next is a guy who loves to make history. This is 54-year-old John Stewart, a construction manager from Washington, Utah. And with this run, he can break his own record as the oldest athlete to qualify for Vegas. His secret to staying young, his seven-year-old daughter. 15 years ago, I got divorced. I had four children from my previous marriage, and they're all adult children now. And then 13 years ago, I got remarried, and we have a little seven-year-old daughter, Miriam. Is this part of your training? No, this is, uh, helps with dexterity. She's the best dad in the whole entire world. When I get older, I want to be a ninja just like my dad, because he's really good. Yeah! She loves Ninja Warrior about as much as I do. You are a little ninja. She's just got so much energy, so I think it really helps me stay young. I still take training for American Ninja Warrior very serious, but my daughter has been there pushing me all the way, you know? Oh. When I see my little daughter on the side there, she's one of the voices I'll hear when I'm running, when I won't hear anything else. Just to see the smile on her face, I just love it. There's Miriam, along with John's other four children and his wife, Lisa, Shannon Stewart's nickname, Rockman. Also watching closely is David Campbell. He'll be eliminated if Stewart completes the bar hop. Well, he is remarkable. Eight grandkids, yet still out here running with these top athletes. One of those who's breaking barriers and encouraging people from all walks of life and all to compete. But just think about this for a second, Matt. John Stewart was 31 when Daniel Gill was born, yet they're out here on the same course. He's the oldest person ever to complete a city finals course two years ago in Denver. And you know he'd love to break his own record tonight. And there she is, Miriam cheering him on. Wow, did you see that speed? He is cooking with gas. And his family so excited, so supportive of his passion. Each of the past two years, he's earned a spot in Las Vegas. If he can do it again with this run, it'll be three in a row, which is a huge accomplishment for anyone. John Stewart fighting his way through the tire swing. He's bringing his eight game. Now the bar hop. John Stewart completes this obstacle. It'll be the first time ever in eight seasons that David Campbell doesn't advance to Mount Midoriyama. And so this grandfather could eliminate the godfather. But you can't overlook the bar hop. We've seen others go out tonight on this final hop. Look at how he gets the bar rocking back and forth before he laches. And he does it. And David Campbell is about to get put out by a 54-year-old man. And he's the one who sent the godfather packing. 54 years old, he would be breaking his own record for oldest up the wall. Well, and he's done it! He's done it. He did it in qualifying, does it again. John Stewart continues with the records, but he's not out here to say he's good for his age, Otto. He's out here to be good for any age. Just think about this. He's almost a minute faster than he was when he was in qualifying. This dude is the real deal. You think of it, last year, this guy was coming off a broken collarbone, still made it to stage one. This year, he is healthy, Akbar, and he feels strong. Well, he should be well prepared for the salmon ladder. He has a 30-foot salmon ladder in his backyard. Wow. On to Bungie Road, but does he have anything left in those forearms? And he just moved through those bungees as well as anyone tonight. There it is. 
is right there. Got it. Business is booming for John Stewart. John Stewart, the oldest to finish the city finals course two years ago. Can he do it once again? And to do it with his daughter cheering him on for the sidelines would make it that much more special. Seven-year-old daughter must be so proud of her dad. But now the window hangs. So challenging after the previous eight grueling obstacles. Only three athletes have made it through. And Matt, he's really using his feet a lot more than other guys who got through. But this gap is the big test. He has to be feeling it. Wow. What's he doing here? Gonna unload out there. This is the climber in. He can do what the young kids do too. Watch this. Serious? Are you like serious John right now? Stewart. John Stewart, what? We've seen athletes in their 20s and 30s fail up and down this course. Born in 1961, plenty of strength left in that body. Turned around a little bit. The fingertip strength, the endurance. This obstacle brutal, and look at that using the lower body. Oh, lock it in. An impressive run out of John Stewart, and he just broke his own record as the oldest athlete ever to qualify for the national finals. John Stewart looked as good as anyone on Bungie Road, but at the window hang, he couldn't quite figure out how to reach the next window, and the fingertips gave out. Let's go down to Christine, who's with John. John, congratulations. You did an amazing job. You're 54 years old. How do you keep doing this? I don't know. I love it. It's in my heart. I, I still feel like I'm 20, and I just never stop doing stuff like this. I love it. The window hang is such a hard obstacle. You looked amazing up there until you went down, but can you break it down for me what happens? Yeah, I'm not really sure. I just didn't have good technique, and it was a little tougher than I thought it was going to be. Well, I know that you live and breathe American Ninja Warrior, so I'm very happy to tell you, you did qualify. You are going to yeah, Las Vegas. Congrats, baby. Yeah. I'll let you celebrate with your family. Congrats. Met no perfect to you. Well, our leaderboard is dominated by young faces, but 54-year-old John Stewart is now right up there with them. He's going back to the national finals. But things not so certain for Tremaine George. He's now on the bubble with one runner left. That runner is his friend, Karsten Williams. One of them is moving on to Vegas. One's going home. We'll find out next on American Ninja Warrior. Welcome back to American Ninja Warrior and the dramatic final moments of the Oklahoma City Finals. We're down to our last runner of the night. It's four-time veteran Karsten Williams, the personal trainer out of McKinney, Texas. He's a familiar face, and so is his mom, Linda, who's always on the sidelines for his runs. And he's got another big fan back in Texas. Since last season, I've been working with the Samaritan Inn that helps the homeless get back on their feet. I've also been mentoring and being a big brother to a young kid named Kenneth. He lost his mom to cancer, and his dad is not in his life. And so I've chosen to really be that father figure to him. <laughs> to have an influential role in his life is profound. Kent is excited about me being on Ninja Warrior. So I want to give him some really good news when I get back. So I got to hit that buzzer tonight because I want to get back to Vegas and go all the way to the top. Yeah. Well, Kenneth is home watching on TV, but mom will be yelling it up for both of them. And Tremaine Dorch in the 15th spot can only watch. Karsten Williams either needs to complete the salmon ladder or get up the warp wall in under three minutes, and he'll go to Vegas. I think he knows getting up the warp wall in three minutes, no problem. It's not going to be for lack of speed with Karsten Williams. Well, look, if he's not going with the speed, he needs to be as efficient as possible. No wasted movement, like right here. On your first click. Oh, mm. And there it That's is, missing efficient. that first hook. Gets in on the second. It's not just the time, it's also the strength that you're wasting. And that's a smart move. He Come grabbed on, the other ring to stop the spin. He's through. But now the log runner took out 36 athletes in qualifying and seven more tonight. No problem for Karsten. And he's setting a good pace. 
Karsten Williams heating things up now on the tire swing. Trying to get to Vegas for the third time. Tremaine Dorch, his fate in the balance. Well, it's a tough spot to be in. At this point, you'd have to be hoping that your friend, that he makes a mistake. That's what would have to happen for Karsten here. Tremaine, the smile is starting to drop off his face. These guys, they know each other well. Friendly camaraderie, friendly competition. It is a wonderful competition, but unfortunately, there can be only one, ultimately. I can't take it anymore, Matt. I can't take the suspense anymore. The question is, will it be Karsten or will it be Tremaine in that final slot? All the pressure on him, he is staying calm. Oh, he is. And he's through! And he's celebrating. Now he's showing that emotion. All right, don't waste your seconds celebrating. Tremaine knows what's coming, but still bravely smiling. 14 and a half feet between Karsten Williams and return trip to Las Vegas. And now down under half a minute, Akbar. He's been celebrating. Here he goes. And he's got it. Karsten Williams is going back to Vegas. Unfortunately, it means Tremaine Dorch is going home. Akbar, what a night of competition it's been, but it is not over. Karsten still showing us what he can do on the back part of this course. At this point, he's going to Las Vegas, but believe me, you want to go in there feeling as confident as possible. And the way you do that, you get to the top of the invisible ladder. And he's up on the salmon ladder. And you can see the fatigue setting in now, Matt. Absolutely. You can see him starting to get real straight with his arm. Wow. I'd be surprised if he made it through Bungie Road. It's not just a cautious approach. I agree. I think it's fatigued. And Bungie Road is really going to tax those forearms. What is left for Williams? Wow. He has no quit in him. He just keeps going and going and going. He's on the road. Somehow, somehow, someway, he makes Woo! it through. He's done it, Matt. His friend Kenneth's got to be jumping up and down in front of the TV right now. Listen to the crowd, Akbar, how silent they get, how much they appreciate the effort required here on the window hang. We've only had two finishers tonight. Carson's looking to be the third. Look at that reach, though. He just said, forget it. I'm going to use my upper body He's 6'1", 170. That is tremendous power. Season in the Houston City Finals, he fell on the ninth obstacle, which is where he is right now, Akbar. It's almost a five foot reach across. Oh! Karsten Williams, his run comes to an end, but he's still alive in American Ninja Warrior because he's going to Vegas. Well, Carson tried a few techniques, but even at 6 1, he couldn't reach that next ledge. Got a finger on it, but that was all he wrote. Let's go to Christine, who's standing by with the victorious Karsten Williams. Karsten, that window hang is so difficult, and I wow. could see you were trying to do anything you could to make it through. What was going through your mind? Wow, the window, the window hang. It was tough, and I was a little, a little tired at that point, but man, it was a beating. It was a beating. <laughs> tough obstacle. You're a champion in our book. Yeah. You are a champion in our book. You're a champion in our book. I agree, you are a champion. Um, you knocked out Tremaine. He was on the bubble. How do you feel about that? Um, I'm gonna make sure I don't look him in the eye. Um, <laughs> but that's my that's my boy right there. He's like family to me. That's just how the cards fall sometimes. And I'm just thankful and blessed to have this opportunity. Well, you are moving forward to Las Vegas. I look forward to seeing you guys both and your whole crew in Las Vegas. Congratulations, enjoy the ride. <laughs> guys, back to you. So lots of familiar faces going home and some new faces dominating the leaderboard. Second year man Daniel Gill is at the top along with our only other finisher, rookie Grant Clinton. Karsten Williams was one of the few veterans to survive. He ended up in the eighth spot. All these athletes now move on to the national finals. We're taking a break for the Olympics, but we'll be back in three weeks with the last of our city finals competitions in Philadelphia. For the first time, we'll see four women in the city finals. Michelle Warkey, Rachel Goldstein, 
Alyssa Beard, and Jesse Flex Lebrecht. For Akbar Bajabia Mill and Christine Leahy, I'm Matt Eisman. We'll see you next time on American Ninja Warrior. to so many young girls. No woman has ever completed this. Unbelievable! Emmy-nominated American Ninja Warrior. Return.